Yeah, yeah, I'm about six minutes early, but you know, you know what I'm doing. You know how I do what I do for only $100. I promote whatever you need on my social medias and my website. That's my Twitter, Facebook, Insta stories, YouTube community, and my website, which you will be featured on www.doggydiamondstv.com, which you should be logging on anyway, every day. Hit me up on Instagram at Doggy Diamonds for your promo. Serious inquiries only must be cash at ready. Let's get into it. So <laughs> I'm back doing what I do. The interview K-I-N-G. You know, when people reach out and they hit me up and I already was watching some of their work, it makes it easier. So like, yo, yeah, let's do it. Let, let's go. So we here on this evening. Shout out to everybody on the West Coast. Shout out to the, the South. Shout out to the the Northeast, my hometown, Brooklyn. Shout out to the Northwest, Seattle, Washington, same place. Shout out to the UK. Shout out to the motherland, the whole African continent. Shout out to everybody in Europe. Shout out to people in Australia. Shout out to people in the Middle East. We here, and I promise, it's gonna be one you ain't never, ever, ever going to forget. So without any further ado, I introduce myself really quick. <laughs> I go by the name of, you know who I am. I'm Doggy Diamonds. This is Doggy Diamonds TV. This is Doggy Diamonds No Filter. The super chat is open. The cash app is pinned to the top of the chat. So if you feel like, you know, you want to send a donation in, it's available. You see the cash app, dollar sign, Doggy Diamonds. The, you can even send something through PayPal, whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But most importantly, I need you to hit that like button and I need you to hit that share. And I need you to be fully engaged in this conversation. I see South Carolina in the building. So without any further ado, let me introduce my guest to y'all. Matter of fact, I never introduced my guest. I have you introduce yourself. Tell the people your name. Man, my name is Big Court of No Limit Forever, No Limit Records. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Master P, right hand man uh, from Kansas City, Missouri. Been living in L.A. 20 years. Uh, some of the people probably know who I am. They see me at the No Limit reunions. They see me in the movies. They see me with P a lot. So, uh, you know, I've been around for a minute. I've been around since the 90s. So, yeah. So, KC, how you get from KC to, to linking up with Master P, who's from, he was in L.A., no, not LA. Yeah. He was in California, no, he right? In the Bay. In the, in the Bay. Bay. He was in California, right. but then he also was in um um, you know, he's from New Orleans. How did y'all link up? Um, well, when I lived in Kansas City, I was a rapper way back in the day. So I've been knowing P since nineteen ninety six. So mm -hmm. I actually been rocking with P for twenty six years. Ooh. You know what I mean? So I've been around almost, you know, two and a, over two and a half decades, you know what I mean? So um I met him through some music shit years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we just formed a, a brotherhood, a, a relationship ever since then, and shit, we've been rocking since then. You know, I'm an only child, so, you know, him and Big Boz, shout out to Big Boz from No Limit, they always kind of been, you know, the big brothers that I never had, so that's what that, that's what that is. So you are a No Limit soldier. Through and through, No Limit soldier, through and through. And the thing what people gotta understand is, you know, No Limit is not just a record label. No Limit is a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? That's family at the end of the day. You know, so it ain't just about artists and all of that. Family. All right, I think, is A still on with us? A, if you mute, let me, yeah, that was A joint playing back. All right, just, I just fixed it. So, um, Big Court, um, I just seen <laughs> your podcast. Tell them the name of your podcast. Uh, the name of the podcast is Holding Court Podcast. Okay, I, I really, really like, um, the production is dope. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. I love, I love interviewers. I love interviewing and I like when it's articulate and it's put together. So it's put together nice. I, I can't, how many episodes do you have? Well, it's called holding court and that's on iTunes, Spotify, everything, right? We own all the streaming platforms. So, holding court. Yeah. so ladies and gentlemen, he has a podcast. It's yeah. on YouTube, but he has a podcast, not a YouTube show. I keep telling y'all, if your YouTube, audio yeah. is not on iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, all of that, 
you have a YouTube show. So you have an official so, podcast. Go ahead. You know, I have a podcast. We live on YouTube, but we also have the audio streaming on all the Spotify's, wherever you get your shit from. You know what I mean? So yes. Got you. And um, how many, you told me you have a lot of episodes, so we, we got to play catch up. Yeah. Yeah. We got about, we got about 160 uh, videos on there. Um, We've had uh, Ice T. We just had Ice T on there. We've had Master P. We had Jay Prince. Uh, we had Lil Easy E, Michael Ja White, the actor, Crip Mac, Bosco, Silk the Shocker. Um, man, we've had so many great guests, bro. You know, and you know, I've been in, I've been in music, and I've been in Hollywood and in the business for a long time. So, you know, I have a lot of relationships with these people. So, most of the people that came to the show were people that I, you know, I just that's just a phone call. That's yo, that's like me. People say, yo, how you get all these people? I'm like, I just call yeah. the homie and say, yo, I need you to pull up for me. Yeah. I've been because I've been in the music business since '92. You know what I'm saying? I was okay. like, yeah, I was like 15 years old. '90 for me, 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um. The latest episode that I seen, and, and somehow you came through the feed. I don't know because my name was going through the algorithm with Wack One Hundred, but mm -hmm. you came through my timeline, my YouTube feed. So I ended up watching it, and you said first you had a long show, but then I seen a clip. You said mm -hmm. Wack One Hundred is the superhead of hip hop and clubhouse. Break that down. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? I did say that. I say that, and I stand on it. Um. Well, first let me say this <clears throat> because. Let me just just get the information out there. For one, I'm Big Court. That's Master P. I'm addressing him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not speaking for P. I'm not talking for P. P don't need nobody to talk for him. You know, this is fly shit to him. This, this ain't nothing to him, right? He ain't giving this no air. I'm responding. I am addressing whack myself. Superhead 100. You feel me? So, <clears throat> and then let me just put this out there, too. You know, I've never, I know I'm in shape, you know what I'm saying? I've never been a bodyguard. I've never been security. You know, P is my brother. I've been knowing him 26 years. You feel me? That's that. That's literally like family. That's my brother. So I'm going to protect him. I'm, I, I can't help it because I'm cell block ready and I'm war ready and I take care of myself and I'm in shape. So let's squash that right there because a couple of people was trying to uh, distort, you know, uh, what it is. Um, so... The thing is, man, I just felt compelled. I've been watching this dude for a minute, right? Uh, I've been annoyed with him for a while. You know, I just didn't say anything. You know, I mind my business. That's what we do, man. We grind. We don't really make it our business to get in other people's business, and we don't participate in that type of bitch-ass shit. Uh, but when he came and said something about my brother, I'm like, man, this dude talk too much. Like, especially when you talk about innuendo, you talk about lies and and different things like that. So uh, the thing is, he keeps harping on Nick Cannon. He keeps saying the reason that he has an issue with Pete is because of what Pete said, said uh, to Nick Cannon. Now, see, I want to break that down. Go ahead. Because he keeps saying that it's in your window. He keeps breezing over it. But this is what I want to point out. So P was basically encouraging Nick Cannon. When Nick Cannon did the interview with Rabbi Cooper, and, you know, he got accused of saying some anti-Semitism type stuff. It was a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So he had to deal with what he had to deal with with the machine. P basically came in as a big brother, as a mentor, and gave him some information and encouragement because Nick was going through it. So Nick received the message. Nick and P have their own relationship, which is why I don't understand why Wack is talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He don't need to talk for Wack. Nick can talk for himself. So basically all P did was tell me, bro, keep your head up. You got the power. You got one of the hottest shows. You know, you don't have to fold to nothing. You don't have to trip. You, you're going to be all right. That's basically what he told him. So nobody had an issue with this. But but for some reason in Wack's crazy head, he he's thinking that somehow or another, P was saying something disparaging to him, even though Nick is not saying that. But this is my question. So, Wack, why the fuck don't you have a problem with the rabbi? That's where the problem started at. You know what I'm saying? So, so you saying that can't nobody say nothing to Nick if they ain't got more money than him. Did the rabbi have more money than him? You know what I'm saying? The, which, which is where all this shit precipitated from, where he almost lost his shit. You know what I mean? So here... 
that, and that's what I want to bring home. It's like, dude is perpetuating that Willie Lynch shit. You know what I mean? He's picking and choosing. Like, you're so divisive with, with black folks. You're so divisive with the culture. You want to pit everybody against everybody, pit everybody against everybody. But then you got some act right, and you want to get right when it comes to the others. You know what I mean? So you mean to tell me, don't know, can't nobody tell Nick nothing. His financial advisors, his his the pe- his producers, his co-producers, the people that he work with, the, the experts that he have around him, they can't give him any counsel because they, you know, he got more money than them. Is that basically what you're saying? The shit is retarded. Mm. The shit is retarded. So do you I know Wack? Do you know Wack personally? You ever met him? I do. I've never met him. I've mm. never met him. Has, you know, he, has him and Master P ever met to your knowledge? No, no. They, they do not know each other. They've had no business. They don't know each other. This mm. is a weirdo. He's like an obsessed fan. You know what I'm saying? So then to, to make matters worse, so we, we established that, okay, there's no problem with Master P and Nick. You know, this, this thing happened a few years ago. So a few months ago, me and P, we go to New York and he does Nick Cannon's show. Nick ingratiated him. Nick received him. He praised him, brought him on the show, told him, hey, this is my mentor. He gave me a shot when I didn't have nothing, mm. you know, and, and et cetera, right? And so now, Wack tries to spin that like, oh, you know, he, uh, yeah, Nick just pulled a move. You know, Nick's son, demon, woo, woo, woo. So basically, Wack, I guess he's insinuating that, that Nick Cannon is somehow disingenuous. You know what I'm saying? So I know Nick to be a good, What the hell is going on? It it broke. Um, I can't hear you for some reason. Um, that might be something on my end, though. Say something. You got? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead. Um, so, so, so you're so saying you know I, Nick to be? I know Nick to be um, you know, a person of integrity. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I know Nick to be a good dude. So what I'm saying is, whack, is he somehow suggesting that Nick is being disingenuous? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, the agent of confusion. Nick don't need him to, so, to, to speak for him, you mm-hmm. know? So Nick doesn't have a problem with Pete. P doesn't have a problem with Nick. You know, they brothers. We just did the show. And about a month and a half after we just did the show, just here in 2022, Nick Cannon and, and, and P, they did a Zoom thing. I don't know what's happening. Somebody calling you. Sorry, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead though. They yeah. did the Zoom thing. Uh-huh. They, they did the Zoom thing. Uh uh Nick and Master P did a Zoom thing helping the colleges, you know, uh talking about helping students that are in college. Mm-hmm. So so that's what I'm saying. So you see what I'm saying? Like P and Nick are good. They're on some positive shit. They're trying to, you know, help the community. They're trying to interject positivity into the community. And then you have, you know, Steven from Django over here, you know, with the Willie Lynch shit over here trying to insert, you know, uh, divisiveness and, 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 and try, you know, it. and so I had to say something because dude just, you know, he, he, he talks too much. He doesn't come with facts. I mean, he's stuck on petty little boy shit. And to be honest with you, P has worked in the community for 22 years, 22 years. He's been giving back to not only Compton, L.A., Watts, but, you know, Louisville, Memphis, New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? So all, all Wack has been doing is interjecting negativity and causing confusion. The hood really need to be putting pressure on Wack. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you contributing? Other than running your fucking mouth on Clubhouse, what are you contributing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you actually doing besides making us, pitting us against each other and causing confusion. I don't know of any programs that he's done. I don't know of any positive initiatives he's done in the hood. You know what I'm saying? All I know is the gang banging, the gossiping, the shit talking, and the pocket watching, you know? And quite frankly, that's why I had to to address it because I'm just tired of it. He's like a, a petulant little child. You know what I'm saying? He just needs to grow the fuck up. Yo, I, I not for nothing though. You kind of on swole too. Like, um, Real talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, no. And, and but but I want you to do something. Stand up and show the people. This ain't no little dude, man. Like like I ain't never do no shit like this before. But that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, this this is a different type of dude right here. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 like. So you work out every day. You on it. And that's and this and this is the thing. Listen, and it's not even about that because at the end of the day, we come in peace. But you can't come playing with us. You know what I'm saying? We too old to get into all of the negative shit. Like. You know, but at the same time, yes, you know, I'm 6'3", 240 pounds, so I, no. can't, be bullied. I yeah. can't be bullied, I can't be pressed, I can't be extorted, I can't, none of that bullshit. I ain't barring none of that. I can't, you can't do that with me. But I'm not trying to take it there. I'm only trying to correct them. I'm just correct. saying, you know how do be coming with the disrespect a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, you know, you're not talking to no... No little, you know, I'm dude. I'm not a little boy. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, a yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm a couple years older than Wack. So, no, I'm not a peewee at all. You know what I'm saying? And I'm addressing him. And again, I'm not trying to condemn him. I'm not trying to disrespect him. I'm not trying to tear him down. You know, I'm just trying to open up the conversation of the facts about my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're so preoccupied with what another man's doing with his money and how he's living. This is the thing. You keep talking about, oh, P written the house, woo woo. So you mean to tell me that none of your bosses, Ray J, uh, Birdman, or Nick Cannon have never rented a house. They mm. never rented a condo. They've never done any of that. So this is the contradictions that I'm talking about where it's just confusion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, your, your artists ain't never rent a house. You know, they ain't never rent cars or nothing like that. Like, what people do with their money and how they choose to live is what they choose to do. Like Vlad, like Vlad, for instance, mm -hmm. Vlad to be. Vlad got money. We all know this. But Vlad chooses. He's had this conversation. He said, look, I'm rich. I rent my house in Calabasas, but I own a bunch of investment properties and different things. I just feel like a primary house is a liability. That's his choice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I had a conversation with Matthew Knowles in a hotel lobby who is a uh, Beyonce's dad. father, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And we were talking real estate because I own over forty investment properties, mm. and he said the same thing. He said, "I'll never buy a primary house." You know, um, I I choose I own so much shit in different cities, but I like to be fluid with my primary. I like to be able to move. I don't want to be stuck nowhere like that. So again, you know, that's what I mean by truth in business. And then you have some people that may want to do that. But the thing is, it's smoking mirrors. He but my thing trying. is, bro, how could Master P be broke? Like, how do who seen uh, who? How could somebody say he broke? That means they seen his account balance. That means they see exactly. this, this is what this That's is what point. I'm confused with. How, how, how can how can a man who has given for 22 years has has given to the community and taken care of the community and and created opportunities for so many other people outside of music? It doesn't make it doesn't add up, bro. And I'm not here, you know, we don't give a fuck about trying to prove the bullshit. Because one thing that I know, a lot don't care who tells it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we not here to try to be, you know, flashing money and, oh, he can't maneuver us like that. So it's more about, he's a talking head. We're talking to the people that follow him and the people that may think like them. We trying to correct them and get them off the path of destruction and negativity. That's really what it's about. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, babe, I, I don't want to be messy, but shit, Birdman, you know, he was just renting a house in Bel Air. But his news headlines about whatever that situation is, it, it went bad, whatever. You know what I mean? But he's not talking about that. So everybody else, everybody around you shit is together, but but everybody else. He got so much to say about everybody else. So, you know, it, it's just a constant disrespect. He disrespects deceased people. He disrespects Tupac. You disrespect Nipsey. It's just no integrity. And I'm just, I'm, I'm sick of that. You know, even Suge, Suge gave him a fucking chance. You know what I'm saying? Suge gave him an opportunity. And he fucked over Suge. This is what, you know what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Yo, I want to come back tomorrow. Let's come back tomorrow. Let's continue with this tomorrow. I got, I got, a, I got, a, let's leave them with this really quick. We ain't going to give them too much. Let's leave them with this real quick. Let's come back tomorrow i want to see if they're going to show up for us tomorrow i want this room with thousands of people so let them know we'll be back here tomorrow 7 p.m and we're going to continue with this dialogue we're going to get into some other stuff see that's how that's how real it is hold on hold on hold on 
That's how real it is. We listen. We gonna come back tomorrow. We gonna come back tomorrow. We gonna get into some more dialogue tomorrow with uh with Big Court. I didn't even want to stay on here long. I just wanted to give y'all that real quick. We gonna be back tomorrow with the rest of this dialogue. So I just cut it off real quick. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the bill, I just cut off. We gonna come back tomorrow. We just put this out there. So tomorrow, I want to see thousands of people in here. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. He didn't log off. I logged it off. He didn't log off. I logged it off. I hit the button. We will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want y'all here. This is what we do. We're going to leave it out like that. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 p.m. Doggy Diamonds TV. On that note, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all night. Make sure y'all share. Send this around. Spread this around. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. I'm Doggy Diamonds. This is Doggy Diamonds TV.